not forget my sojourn in Nigeria, where I think I really learned the skills mm -hmm. for 10 years I was in Nigeria, mm -hmm. Huara State for one year, Nigerian Herald, then moved to New Nigerian Newspapers, which belonged at the earlier, mm -hmm. earlier belonged to the 10 northern states of Nigeria. Okay. Uh, later, the federal government took over. So uh, we had New Nigerian Newspaper, Sunday New Nigerian, and then Gaski Ata Fikobo, which was the Hausa version. I see. But, but in Ghana, you've only done Daily Guide? Uh, in Ghana, newspaper, yeah, Daily Guide. Daily Guide. Yes. Is the newspaper industry dead or dying? Um, it's, it's, it's not dead, but it appears it is dying. There are a lot of challenges which must be overcome, but I doubt if these can be overcome mm. immediately. Do you think journalism is worth training for now. Everybody is a journalist now. If you have a mobile phone, you are doing journalism, social media, and all of these things. People think that there's no need to go and train to be a journalist and that journalism as we know it is a dying profession. What, what you, what's your thinking on that? No, no, no. I mean, people still have to go for the training. I mean, it's, 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 it's a profession. It isn't uh, an occupation as some would want to look at it. That is why we have a lot of challenges in our society today. Those who are not trained pretend to be members of that fraternity, and then in, they, they end up releasing, disseminating poisonous stuff to the people. Mm -hmm. No ethics, and, and it continues. Mm. I, I've, I've been reading you from many, many years ago, when I was in, I'm sure, primary school or GSS. Really? A.R. Gomda, yes, 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 I've been reading. Oh, wow, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's good to see you in person. And to <laughs> well, let's, talk, let's, let's talk about Hajj. Let's yeah, talk about Hajj. Right, so, right. so Hajj um, is an affair, it's a ritual that Muslims undergo every, every year. Yeah. It's been loosely done in the past. At what point did government decide to intervene? And what is government's involvement in Hajj affairs? Um, one with the creation of the Hajj it, board. Yes, mm. uh, one can look at it. Um, when President Kufuo was in charge, there was an effort to reorganize it. There was um, a national Hajj organization which was created. Okay. And uh, it went on for a while. And then the NDC came. And then there was uh, a Hajj board which was... No, there was, it wasn't a Hajj board. Uh, there was an Alaji Abdul Rauf who was in charge. Tanku. He was running Tanku. No, he was think, running. Think, no, it. MP. He, he, yeah, he was for, an MP. Yeah, yeah, Yagaba. No, yeah, it was Hajj. It was Hajj board at the time, I think. Uh, it was Hajj board. I, I, but I, I know, I, I know he was running the place like a sole administrator, you know. And uh, there were some advantages uh, he he got. So it wasn't a board. That. There wasn't a board okay. like we have now. Okay. Uh -huh. There wasn't a board like we have now. And uh, at the time he left, there were challenges too. It's, it's, managing Hajj is quite Herculean. It, it's, it's, it's very difficult. You know, and, uh, so what does a board do? What, what well, do the, board, do? The, board, the board arranges for the pre-Hajj arrangements. They send representatives to Saudi Arabia to meet with uh, reps of the ministry. In fact, the minister himself of Hajj and Humrah. Okay, in Saudi. Because look, Hajj is a serious business. A congregation of between three and four million human beings at one place. Wow. It has to be managed. That is why there is a whole ministry in charge. Now, when this delegation goes, like other countries which participate in this annual mm -hmm. exercise, mm -hmm. They discuss, among other things, far the most critical for me is the decision on the quota. Now, how many people can a country how, send? How, 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 how many people can a country send? And this is why this issue of people going, attempting to use non hard visa for visa is giving problems to the Saudi authorities to the extent that now the frequency of issuing correspondence warning people not to abuse their visas and that this year is going to be unlike other years they are going to enforce the rules it's it's important I explain that warning from the from the saudi government what does it mean it mean if if i were a tourist and i go to saudi i'm a muslim and it's time for hajj i should be able to stroll in and perform hajj no you cannot do that okay. because there should be control that is why not every saudi national 
gets the opportunity to perform their Hajj. Otherwise, I mean, one would have said that every year, every national of Saudi Arabia can just walk in there to perform the rituals. No. When you do that, there is the possibility of stampede. Okay. So they, they want to have a tab on the numbers. That is why, for instance, depending on the, the status of a country's uh, Muslimness, mm -hmm. as it were. The Muslim population. Yes, population in the country. Uh, Indonesia, for instance, the most populous Islamic country, mm -hmm. will have more numbers okay. given them than Ghana. Mm -hmm. Ghana will have between four and 6,500. So currently, Nigeria will what, have more. What's the quota well, this year, our quota is 4,000. They give us 4,000. 4,000 this year. Is an increase or a reduction in uh, there is there, there is a reduction. Why? La, um, it's the, the patronage. We have had this challenge of people uh, trying to cut corners, mm -hmm. going on their own mm -hmm. by going lying to the Saudi authorities that they are going for Umrah, mm -hmm. and then when they get to Saudi Arabia, they 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 hide around, wait for the main body of real Hajj pilgrims to arrive, mm -hmm. then they join the camp, and and thereby performing the Hajj. Well, illegally, as it were. Okay. And uh, they give us a lot of problems by so doing because, look, we arrange for logistics, mm -hmm. log logistic management. We have to make room for, let's say, 4,000 beds. Now, 4,000 beds over there in Saudi, over there in Saudi Arabia. Okay. There are various stations of the Hajj, the Arfa, Mina, the tent city. Mm -hmm. Now, those are normal places where you sleep for a certain number of days. Then you come to the hotel proper. That is in uh, Mecca. Mm -hmm. That place we are camped in hotels, okay. modern hotels and, and, and facilities. So you have to arrange all these We have things. to arrange. In fact, when the, the team goes there, the delegation goes there, uh, meets the, attends the conference, and then the, um, the, the quota is decided upon. Then other arrangements such as arranging for accommodation, arranging for transportation within the kingdom, mm -hmm. movement from, let's say, um, Medina to Mecca, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So you had your board organize all these Yes, things. yes, the do you, have, board. do you have people who are Ghanaians who are there, members of the board who work on these things, or you operate from Accra? How do you do it? No, no, no. We go there, and uh, we have the support of the embassy. Okay. The embassy staff are around to assist us where necessary, and so on and so So if 4,000 people go for the Hajj from Ghana, you become the chaperone of all these 4,000 people? Oh, or, yes, or but they are, we have... They are no, no, they are, they are not free to move about. We have Hajj agents. Okay. We have the Ghana Hajj Agents Association. So you work with they them? support, and then we work with them. And then we have uh, a task force which also supports here and there. What do the agents do? The agents are like travel agents. Okay. They will, you know, they, they, they are the uh, points where the prospective pilgrims come. So if you want and to go to Hajj in Ghana, you first have to contact an agent. You can't go to the Hajj. No, you can come to the Hajj, but we even have a Ghana Hajj app. Okay. In fact, uh, this digitization thing is helping us a lot. Mm. There are people who do it through the Ghana Hajj app. Okay. Uh, thanks. But, but if you go through um, an agent, you, your name will then be submitted to the board. Yeah, your name will be submitted to the board and then the agents will be entitled to commissions. Do you have to issue them passports? Do you facilitate the provision of course? Yes, the, 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 the uh, facilitation is done by the Hajj agents. They do that. So they work with the passport office to they secure passports? They work with passport. the passport office. They work with us. and, and yes. Do they get some it. expedited passports? Usually people apply for a passport. Yes, yes. In time. fact, uh, these, yes, they do. So they they, do, yes. So Currently, I remember a few weeks ago, there were challenges at the passport office, but... Uh, I think upon realizing that, look, time is not on our side, they started expediting action okay. on the applications. What is the cost of going to Hajj in 2024? How much are we charging people? 75,000 Ghana cities. Is that not too high? Why? Last year, it was 75,000 Ghana cities. This year, it is 75,000 Ghana cities. It's not been increased. There hasn't been any increase. In fact, anybody who pays 75,000 Ghana cities mm. uh, saves $250. In Nigeria, I think they are paying over 80,000, over uh, the equivalent of 80 something thousand Ghana cities. Per person. Per person. But then they have, they are entitled to. 
um, a certain pocket money of five hundred dollars. Oh, okay. But all the same, Ghana is the lowest. So, around so the if I pay seventy five thousand dollars, what yeah. do I get in return from the Hajj board? You get a lot of things. One, we'll take care of you. Two meals a day. Okay. Transportation within the kingdom. In fact, the two meals a day uh, covers the entire one month that you are going to stay You're in Saudi Arabia. You're going to be there Arabia. for one month? Yeah, it's a dirty day then. And you take care of accommodation? Accommodation, transportation within the kingdom, and my, the medical facilities are super. Do you give pocket money too? Or no, you don't? we don't give pocket don't money. Give. We don't okay. give pocket money. But there are some bags that you give them. We give tray bags. What's, that give purpose? Bags. What's the purpose? The of bags that? are supposed to control, you know, if you don't give bags, you will end up having excess luggage on okay. the aircraft okay. and the uh, being an aircraft, there is a need to control the weight. So you also take care of the flights. You the you, flight you ticket is it's, it's within the seventy five. In fact, it's one of the things that the delegation which goes for the conference and uh, deals with. You're using two airports. You've always been using two airports. Talk to me about what's the plan with the Tamale International Airport in Accra. Is um, we want to uh, reduce the inconvenience of having like it was previously people transporting themselves from the north to Accra, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and especially do this when there wasn't this expedited means of managing the Hajj. Mm -hmm. People coming to sleep around the Hajj village three, four days. It was an eyesore. So uh, the wisdom was that, look, let's find a way of reducing the inconvenience. After all, the Tamale Airport can take the, uh, the, the aircraft which ferries pilgrims from this part of the world to Saudi Arabia. So, um, like we have currently this year, we, we fly, uh, I think, four flights from Tamale. Four flights from, four flights starting from when? Tamale, starting from tomorrow. So, the first flight is leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow. It, which airlines are we using? Uh, we are using a private airline. Uh, okay. Yes. A so, private, we charter Saudi the flight? Yeah, yeah, we charter the aircraft. Oh, yeah, okay. Why don't you use commercial? Let them pay and board. Uh, it will be too much. And uh, even with this, uh, people are complaining like you have now that isn't it too much? Mm, mm. So, okay. So you charter flights for moving from Tamale. How many from Accra? Accra, five flights. Five flights. Do you have Kumasi? Yeah. No, not yet. Not so yet. if you're in Kumasi, not you yet. have to either go to Tamale no, or come to Accra. Most of them, will, I think it's better to come to Accra. To so come they to come Accra. to Accra. The bulk okay. of them come to Accra. I see. Yeah. And, and are, you're going to take care of them with all of that. About the agents, briefly, do you know how people who are swindling people in the name of sending people to Hajj, how do you deal with that? That is why we have 42 accredited agents spread across the country. So if you if you want to go to Hajj, you have to go through. How do I know who is an accredited agent? Well, we have them. I mean, people within the Islamic communities know them. Okay. But there are other people, let's put it, quote unquote, the elites. Mm -hmm. Some of them just come directly to the Hajj board to and then pay. Okay. Yeah. 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 What is government's direct involvement in this? Are there any, um, does government spend any money on Hajj or people pay for their trip on their own? Well, people pay for their trips, but um, for the past decade or so, uh, both governments, the NDC and MPP, uh, have had uh, reason to uh, support certain people under what we call the protocol arrangement uh, to go for the Hajj. So some people are sent. About yeah, how yeah, many people, people out of the 4,000, um, about how many people go on protocol? Uh, some, it, it varies. Um, it varies between... I, I don't have the figure immediately. But is that but, not a problem? Um, what kind of problem? Why should uh, why should government be involved in sending people to Hajj? That would be the question. Um, well, le, le, may, maybe maybe uh, let me put it differently. Maybe the political parties. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the parties the will be involved party, yeah, in the parties. That. The parties are involved, not okay. government. Yeah. Okay. Moving forward, what would be your advice to um, Al Hajju or the people who are living now? What would be your advice to them when they go? What are some of the things they should look out for? Well, uh, what they should look out for, um, they, should, they should learn to be with us. They should take instructions from us. Uh, there, there have been instances where people don't take instructions from us. You tell them what to do and they want to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. That is especially being a, a religious exercise. There is a need for them to be very religious so that they get the spiritual dividends which made them go there. That is why we have established the Dawa Committee mm. made up of 
Islamic clergymen, many of who even studied in Saudi Arabia, and who guide them, uh, especially at the various stations mm -hmm. of the pilgrimage, the recitals, the glorification of the Creator, what to do and what not to do, and the like. Okay. What about the Hajj village? Um, do you? What's your arrangement so that the place doesn't become what's the word? Um, choked. What do you do? How do you arrange movement of people so that you don't have so many people who are waiting for flight for days? No, it How, doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't. Under our tenure, it, 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 it that has ceased. Okay. You come, your agents will announce you when you are leaving. Okay. We also do that. You don't come there when your flight is not due. Okay. You only come there when your flight is due. We make the announcements. Those, for instance, in Tamale, we know uh, passengers who are going and they are uh, accompanying agents. Mm -hmm. So we have already made that announcement already. So the agents will get in touch with their passengers. Mm -hmm. You are leaving tomorrow. Get already. So show they up, have, they show have up, show up at the airport. Okay. They have already been given their bags. Mm -hmm. They will load their things and then come. How important is Hajj? You are an Al Hajj. How, is it, how important you, you, is Hajj you, to you, you? You've already mentioned how, it. How it's one of the pillars. To, it's one of Muslim. the pillars of. I mean, a Muslim is required if he can to perform the Hajj once in his lifetime or her lifetime. If you have the capacity. If you have the capacity. What if you are in You have financial means, but you don't have the strength, uh, physical strength. What, what does? How does a Hajj board deal with these matters? If you have an old person who is weak who wants to go to Hajj, how do you deal with them? Well, if is if he's old. Mm -hmm. And he thinks he can perform the height. Nobody stops him. Okay. Uh, because we have, and he has money. Mm -hmm. Because the circumnavigation of the Kaaba, mm -hmm. going around the Kaaba, the Tawaf, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's energetic. I mean, you have to go around a number of times. It's energy sapping. Mm -hmm. So there are wheelchairs and there are people who push people who cannot do it on their own mm -hmm. for money. Okay, so you, uh, if you can afford, then you can you get You can it. get, that's it. People I are mean. going to be coming back on at the end of the Hajj. Um, the issue of flight cancellation, flight delays, are you sure you've sorted that? No, 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 we, never, we, don't, we don't experience that. You don't experience we don't that. experience that. Look, we have people with the experience. The executive secretary has done this in over years. And uh, he's very good at managing these things. So we shouldn't expect to see challenges with flights. No way, no way. Not no in way. Tamale, not in Accra. Not in Tamale, not what in What about Accra. people being left behind? That, oh, you can't go this year. You have to go no, this year. No, no, no. We won't have that problem, and I can assure you. You're not going to no have that. No way, no way. Okay. So assurances are that everything is settled. Everything is set. And uh, in fact, uh, the executive secretary has been in Tamale for the past three or four days, making sure that no nothing is left to chance is it too late for me to register and go on the hajj and um, make payments unless i check what the situation is at the hajj village but it seems everything is sorted everything is sorted so people who are going on hajj should just prepare for the no, they should just prepare i mean the, the visas, visa visa issuance has started already in fact okay. uh, this time around it's done electronically okay yeah Let's leave it here. Thank you so much for joining us on Point Blank. Thank you very much indeed. I wish you could join us. I know. You didn't give me protocol. So when you give me protocol, I'll come. come go, go to your political party. Okay. I have to look for one. Alhaji Abdurrahman Gomda, also known as A.R. Gomda. Edward says I should tell you his Jalabia is still waiting for it. Oh, Charlie. Uh, you promised him my Jalabia. Who is Edward? Eddie. That's his name. You don't know him. Eddie. He just that sent, he that sent guy... He sent a message. He said oh. his name is Eddie. That you promised you, you don't know him. No, I don't. Oh, okay. I should leave it there. Leave it there. <laughs> Alhaji Abdurrahman Gomda, A.R. Gomda, uh, for short, uh, of the Daily Guide, who is also the spokesperson of the Hajj board, joining us for Point Blank tonight.